It's Tuesday, October 19. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The Jamaica Public Service Company Limited, JPS, has been ordered to immediately cease and desist the operation of its Transformer Protection Program pilot project. The order comes from the Office of Utilities Regulation, OUR. The OUR says the pilot project has resulted in wide-scale complaints of frequent and prolonged disruption of electricity services in communities. The regulatory authority in a release states that as of the effective date of the directive issued on October 15, 2021, the project should be suspended for 90 days in the first place from October 15 to allow the OUR to complete its investigations and publish its findings. The OUR said that based on the complaints, there is a real risk that paying customers will be deprived of adequate and reliable electricity as required by the JPS's license obligations. It says failure by JPS to comply with this directive within the time period specified herein, it will render it liable to enforcement action pursuant to Section 9 of the OUR Act. More than 200 Jamaicans were honored for outstanding contributions to the nation on Monday's virtual 2021 National Honors and Awards Ceremony. The awardees included 70 members of the Security Forces and Jamaica Fire Brigade. Governor General His Excellency Sir Patrick Allen in his address said despite the challenges facing the country, he's optimistic that new heroes will emerge and inspire the nation. Four prominent Jamaicans were conferred with the Order of Jamaica, the fifth highest national award, namely former Speaker of the House of Representatives and former Member of Parliament, Pernell Charles, for distinguished public service. Former leader of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter David Phillips, for distinguished and exemplary public service. Ian Kent Levy, for outstanding contribution to business and philanthropy in Jamaica. Ernest Wrangling for exceptional contribution to the development and internationalization of reggae music. Governor General His Excellency Sir Patrick Allen praised the recipients for their work to develop Jamaica in their respective areas of interest. Today we are facing a trifecta of deadly challenges. One, the COVID-19 pandemic. Two, the escalation in crime and violence. And three, road traffic accidents resulting in unprecedented fatalities. These are crises from which we must emerge and stay on track with our developmental goals. From these difficult times, we hope that new heroes will emerge to set the pace and provide inspiration for generations following. Professor Donald Jasper Harris was this year's sole recipient of the nation's fourth highest honor, the Order of Merit. Notably, two members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Detective Constable Michael Beckford and Constable Delano Dunn, along with firefighter Dennis McConey Taylor of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, received the Medal of Honor for Gallantry. On May 2nd, we received a call at the Spanish Town Fire Station that our service was required at Jones Avenue. When we arrived, the police on the scene informed us that there was a gentleman in a pit. On our assessment, we realized that the pit was very deep. I was extended into the pit to try and execute the rescue. The first thing he said to me is that um, God answers prayer. I secured a harness around the, the gentleman and he was successfully um, pulled out of the pit. I also was very happy that I could be a part of something great in, in helping to save a life. The badge of honor for gallantry was also bestowed on two civilians for acts of bravery they displayed to save lives. Badge of honor for gallantry, Mr. Kaim Matthew Duncan for the act of bravery in entering a burning smoke-filled house to successfully rescue his elderly, physically impaired neighbor on March 6, 2021. Well, my friend Lawrence lived next door to me with his father who is not very well. A fire had started and one of the main issues was 
while everyone else had gotten out, we didn't know where his father was. In the heat of the moment, I didn't think about it much. Um, I had gone in to try and find him. I managed to call out and eventually find him in the kitchen where he was huddled down. Once I had found him, that same friend Lawrence helped me get him out. Mr. Dwight Anthony Moore, for the act of bravery and heroism to save the life of a policeman under attack on August 19, 2020. I was in crossroads at my World Tron station. Uh, I was just greeting and meeting customers, spoke to two gentlemen who were in their private capacity, their police officers. I briefly walked away, went into the store, turned around, looked out, and I saw uh, one person being attacked. So I noticed a firearm in play. Quickly, I responded, neutralized the threat, and recovered a gun from the perpetrator who has subsequently pleaded guilty and is now serving a sentence. To be honest with you, I'm ecstatic, I'm excited, my family especially, and my friends even more than I, but I'm catching on. It's excellent, thank you, Jamaica. Thank you, the government. Thank you, my friends, family, citizens. Prior to this past weekend, not many Jamaicans would have known of Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries. The church is now the subject of various media reports following incidents that unfolded on the church grounds, which led to the loss of three lives and the hospitalization of others. The man who heads the congregation is Kevin Othniel Smith. In our next report, Carl Francis sheds some light on Smith as well as Pathways International. Self-proclaimed prophet Kevin Smith has been warning his followers about the end of time and of catastrophic occurrences. Prepare yourself! For you are here this day hearing me. But you hear me with your ears and your hearts are not convinced. But what will have come? That which is already set in motion. That which will come upon not only Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. And thereafter Haiti. And thereafter Florida. Thereafter New York City. Thereafter Los Angeles. And thereafter the world. Hear me! And hear me well. It is a time of a great woe. And another woe, 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 and seven woes have been declared against us. Hear me, people of the earth. The time has come when they that came down have said that they are taking revenge upon the heads of the sons of the divine one. Therefore they will expel us from the earth. Called by followers Excellency Kevin Smith, he has, over time, been making a number of prophetic declarations. Through the word of knowledge, the Lord has perceived me to see untold thousands of people will be vaporized. Jamaica, your hour has come and now is. Your hour where you are being saved. I stand in your altars and see that they are defiled. So my word has come to judge both those who profess to be and are not. For in darkness you participate in evil and wickedness and you spilled innocent blood. As hatred has been rocked, so shall you be shaken. This is a sign that I've spoken when this nation is shaken. The land will rent in a certain section and it will rent a bridge, massive bridge will collapse and roads that have be been built that are new will have five meters split in the distance that the land has been ripped from one to another. And you will know that the prophet has spoken for this word has been declared over you and it shall come to pass. And you will say, how can this be that the mountain that was once stood before you is no more? But you will know that I, the Lord, declare it and so it is established that you will come to your knees and realize that I've called you to myself. But you have turned from me, from the path of truth and from the path of life. 
and you have turned to follow other gods and you have turned to believe what they have spoken. Ah, ah, I hold you in derision. But my people, I will walk with you through your dark hour. I will overshadow you and I will keep you safe. If you trust me, I will not disappoint you and I will not let you down. Walk before me. On October 15, 2021, he urged the followers to, quote, leave Babylon's system which is about to fall. On October 16, 2021, he started documenting on his Facebook page prophecies of planes falling from the sky and boats sinking. On Sunday, October 17, he posted a message on his Facebook page which stated, quote, all members of Pathways baptized under my hands only must be present at church on October 18, 2021. Instructions were also given that members' cell phones be switched off and left at home wrapped in aluminum foil. At about 7 on the evening of October 17, the police, acting on a report made by a member of the church, swooped down on the property. A congregant here, a member of this church, who had been injured apparently when she chose to disobey some instructions given to her by, by the, the leaders of this organization, uh, reported to the police that she had been injured and other information that led us to believe that the persons here were at risk. We're aware that uh, 144 congregants had been told to come here, uh, to meet here. And on responding to that report from the person who was injured and coming here, the first teams of police that arrived were shot at. And so they waited on reinforcements to come. Uh, we were very concerned that some form of uh, ritualized killing was going to take place here and so we did an entry we found that there were a couple of people who had been injured um, by by other members of the church and um, we secured the, the premises held the people i think there were about uh, some 14 children was it 14 children there and we have 31 uh, women now so we see that as a rescue of these children based on what we saw when we came in that uh, there were there are a cult cult like behaviors and cult like uh, a setup that we have seen here when everything settled, three persons were dead and three hospitalized. The pastor of the church, wearing very little, was handcuffed before being taken away. Members of the church, clad in white, were directed to climb into the back of trucks provided by the police before they were whisked away. Investigations are now underway into the death of two members within the sect, as well as the involvement of a policewoman reported to be a member of the church. There was a policewoman here, and we are processing that as well. Do you have any knowledge of any other members of the security forces that's a member of this congregation? We're, we're, we're aware of a couple other people who may be a member of the, the um of the congregation based on what we're seeing inside and so on and of course more information is coming in because of what happened last night what? but what is known about pathways international kingdom restoration ministries of montego bay and the man who heads it a search on the internet revealed the following kevin othneil smith is the head of pathways international located in the heart of montego bay st james he is reportedly a certified psychotherapist and counselor. Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries is described as a revolutionary ministry boasting membership of 1,200 faithful followers. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Carol Francis. 
The police are still on the hunt for a suspect in relation to the kidnapping of 13-year-old Winshay Barrett in Bath, St. Thomas. The teenager was found alive on Monday just outside of Spring Bank, an adjoining community to Bath. There were cries of relief from residents. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson was on the scene and commented on the search for the suspected abductor. She is alive and um, conscious. Uh, so the first thing obviously is to get medical, get her to medical attention. So they'll be doing that, um, and we will, we'll see. The good thing is that she's alive and well. And we Where was she her. found? Though? In Saint she Thomas, found, in the same parish, or she outside? was found about three miles away from in a wooded area, mm -hmm. from where she was abducted. The suspect. We'll see. Amarant Bay High School student Winche was reported missing after 4 p.m. on Saturday after accompanying her older sister to feed pigs in their backyard. Her abduction came just hours after nine-year-old Felicia Persia was found alive almost two days after being taken from her home, also in Bath. United Nations office in Jamaica will mark this year's UN Day with a raft of activities including a week-long campaign dedicated to frontline workers who continue to support Jamaica's COVID-19 response and recovery. In a release, the UN Jamaica office says from October 17 through to October 24, public and private sector organizations across Jamaica will show their appreciation to Jamaica's heroes of the pandemic by eliminating the exterior of their buildings in blue light in the evenings. According to the release, Light Jamaica Blue recognizes the wide range of essential staff who continue to partner with the people and government to help reduce, avert and recover from the impact of COVID-19. UN Day recognizes the founding of the Intergovernmental Organization on October 24, 1945. Time now for a look at the latest financial market update and news. We get the business report from Gabriel Thompson. In foreign exchange trading for Friday, October 15, the U.S. dollar sold for an average $151.58. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $123.35. The pound sterling traded for $209.02 and the euro sold for an average $180.36. In Friday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 458 points to close at over 407,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 89 stocks of which 45 advanced, 35 declined and 11 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 20 points to close at over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, Blue Power Group Limited and Caribbean Cement Company Limited. Stocks declined for Access Financial Services Limited, Barita Investments Limited and Berger Paints Jamaica Limited. Trading firm were 138 Students Living Jamaica Limited, Community and Workers of Jamaica CCU Deferred Share, and Dolphin Cove Limited. Mayberry Jamaican Equities Limited was the volume leader with over 10 million units, followed by Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with over 4 million units, and Jamaican Tees Limited with over 3.7 million units. In market data for oil, prices rose on Tuesday as a supply crunch in natural gas, electricity and coal continued across the globe while falling temperatures in China revived concerns over whether the world's biggest energy consumer can meet domestic demand for heating. Brent crude futures rose 35 cents or 0.4 percent to $84.68 a barrel after falling 0.6 percent on Monday. 
West Texas Intermediate crude futures gained 70 cents to $83.14 a barrel, having risen 0.2% in the previous session and nearly 10% this month. And on that note, we close this Tuesday edition of the Business Report inside the news on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Pleasant viewing. Here are some stories being tracked across the region. In Trinidad and Tobago, the Attorney General has condemned the leader of the opposition for filing a motion to remove President Paul May Weeks from office during a virtual media conference on Monday. He described the move as an attack on the office of the president. Mahela Joseph Wharton of TTT News has more. Mrs. Passard Bissessa's criticisms, in my view, have unfortunately crossed the line. Attorney General Faris al rawi said the Constitution doesn't allow for opposition leader Kamala Passard Bissessa to take legal action. The leader of the opposition made statements alleging that it was improper of the Attorney General to represent the president. And I wish to caution the leader of the opposition that the Constitution is completely clear that you cannot bring civil proceedings in, in the largest point of, of, of factor of the Constitution unless there are certain exceptional reasons. You cannot bring, bring proceedings against the office of the president. The AG's comments come after what he described as improper comments from the leader of the opposition following a high court judgment which found former police commissioner Gary Griffith's appointment as acting commissioner was unlawful and therefore void. He said the opposition leader's action is unwarranted. I do believe, most respectfully, an attack upon the office of the president, an unjustified attack for Mrs. Passard Bissessa, to be making the overreach that she does now on the office of the president. There are no facts which I believe to be sustainable for this particular motion. AG al Rawi said the next step will entail reformulation of the acting appointment selection process number 2, order 2009, to bring it in line with the judge's interpretation of the Constitution. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TTT News. In Grenada, the president of the Grenada Union of Teachers is warning the country's prime minister to tread carefully on the issue of mandatory vaccination for COVID-19. This as a government this week charts the way forward towards the reopening of schools throughout the country. President of the Grenada Union of Teachers, Jude Bartholomew, is warning government against any possible draconian measures to force its members to take the COVID-19 vaccines. So I think he should tread cautiously and be wise. Yes, he might be pressured. We don't know from where. The, probably the government of Grenada. We don't know if it's locally, regionally and internationally. And he have a lot of things to deal with. But let wisdom prevail. And don't go down that road of forcing vaccination upon teachers and of other workers of this country. Convince them educate them and let them make a matter of choice. Government is presently discussing the reopening of schools as COVID cases continue to diminish. However, government made it clear that vaccination is seen as one of the possible measures to be considered towards the resumption of schools. In a recent message to Grenada, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell spoke about the important role of vaccination in the reopening of schools. The vaccination rate, unfortunately, among teachers and other personnel in the education sector is abysmal. The uptake of Pfizer vaccine, which is administered to children for 12 and above, is also low at this point. Against this backdrop, it is difficult for government to announce, at this time, the reopening of schools. Bartholomew is appealing to the Prime Minister to step with caution on the issue of vaccination. In August, the duty stated its stance on COVID-19 and mandatory vaccination. We encourage teachers to educate themselves about the COVID-19 vaccine and to follow the Ministry of Health COVID-19 protocols. And that vaccination is a matter of choice that teachers own free will. Let me just go forward. We made it clear that we are not against vaccination, but it must be a matter of choice. It may be a matter of choice, all right? What the Grenada Union of Teachers is totally against is mandatory vaccination. But Ptolemy says he wouldn't like the history of Prime Minister Mitchell as a long-standing politician to end with a bitter taste. Prime Minister of Grenada and the government of Grenada, 
they didn't mandate in terms of elections. They didn't mandate in terms of to force people to vote for them. They didn't mandate in terms of they have 15 seats. And what did they do? They convinced the citizens of Grenada, this country, to vote for them. So if you could convince people to vote for you and you got 15 seats, what is in you now, directly now, that you can convince the nation, educate and convince your people? But Ptolemy says teachers are most happy in the classrooms, but believes that looking at a phased approach towards January of 2022 may be the safest at this time for the resumption of face-to-face -face teaching and learning. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Law enforcement authorities continue to express concern over the continued violations of the COVID-19 protocols by citizens of St. Lucia. Officials note that violators who fail to comply with the law are putting the frontliners of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force at increased risk of infection. Your health and safety are in your hands, has been the mantra of the authorities from the outset of the deadly pandemic. But a few recalcitrant citizens continue to show blithe disregard for public health measures designed to protect themselves and their loved ones. Over the time period, October 11th to 15th, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force registered a number of breaches in the COVID-19 prevention protocols. The breaches are as follows. Bars, one, and the owner was given a ticket. Non wearing of masks, 68. Two individuals were ticketed and 66 individuals were warned. Curfew breaches, and that was prior to the legislation or SI changing, nine. Confinement breaches, 20. And the curfew breaches, nine tickets were issued. Confinement, four tickets were issued and 21 warnings. Despite the continued ban on mass crowd gatherings, the RSLPF still recorded a number of contraventions of the prohibition of grand social events. Mass crowd breaches, there were two. And two tickets were given. Home party breaches three, one individual was arrested, one was given a ticket and the other was warned. And those were the breaches that were recorded for the week 11th to 15th October 2021. Assistant Commissioner of Police Dr. Mashama Sili says law enforcement in the first instance has issued warnings for the violation of the stay-at-home Sunday orders. That's in keeping with the steady rollout of the ticketing system and the transition from the SOE shelter-in-place regulations to the Prevention and Control Act stipulations with exceptions for worship and exercise. In sports, we're out the blocks with athletics. The fastest woman alive, Elaine Thompson Hera, announced her split from MVP track club on Monday. In a statement, the Olympic sprint double champion said she is, quote, training independently and will continue to do so while I finalize all aspects of my team for the upcoming season, end quote. This comes less than a month after Thompson Hera dismissed reports that she had written a letter to MVP with the intention to cut ties with the club that has nurtured her career since 2014. Then she claimed the reports were rumored and chalked it up to nothing more than media mischief. Thompson Hera enjoyed a golden 2021 season as part of MVP, where she won three Olympic gold medals, won her third Diamond League 100-meter title, and clocked the second fastest 100-meter time in history. Over now to cricket. The West Indies suffered a seven-wicket defeat at the hands of Pakistan on Sunday. This was a warm-up match ahead of the 2020 World Cup group stage of matches, which begin next weekend. The regional team posted a paltry 139 for seven off their 20 overs, with Shemar and Hetmeyer topping the scoring with 28 runs. Captain Kieran Pollard struck 12, and Chris Gale managed 20 runs. In reply, Pakistan chased the run successfully with 27 balls to spare. And that's all we have for you today. You've just watched the news on PBCJ.
pleasant viewing.